Hey, hey, Gator Nation. Welcome back to the Respect Our Decision podcast. Guys, this is episode number 100. Man, we appreciate you all so much for helping us get to this point, man. Big milestone for us. As always, I'm your boy, Hirsch. With me tonight, our man, CJ, can't be here for the 100th episode, man. We're kind of sad about it. His baby's a little under the weather. Make sure you keep his family in your prayers tonight. But joining us from Locked On Gators, Brandon Olson. Brandon, how you doing, brother? Fantastic. I'm very grateful to be here. Thank you. Man, we're happy to have you. And always with us, man, from day one. Day one, down since day one, the hype man, Wes. Yes, sir. Ten toes down, baby. Ten toes down. He a real oose. (laughs) (laughs) To all my wrestling fans. Y'all, we got a lot of wrestling fans. They're going to love the reference. (laughs) Guys, if you'd like to help celebrate with us, you'd like to give us a a 100-episode gift, go ahead, subscribe to the channel, guys. That would help us a ton in our growth, trying to get 4,000 subscribers before kickoff of the first game, of course. And you can go out there and download this podcast wherever you get your podcast from, guys. We're available on all platforms. Make sure if you can, go out, visit us on Patreon. It helps us and support us as creators. Respectourdecision.com or, or slash respect our decision on Patreon. And as always, guys, if you are able, go out, check out Florida Victorious. Use our code decision. Save 20% off your first month help out the Gator athletes that are out there as we try to, man, we're, we're trying to roll in this recruiting class, man. And we got a big, big ad today and one this weekend. We're going to talk about all of it and maybe what's to come here in the future. As we get into July, we got another uh, big commitment coming up Saturday that we know of, and there could be more coming, but let's jump right into it, man. Today, 1 o'clock, Joshua Moore committed to the Gators over Florida State and maybe Miami. I'm not really worried about it. More more, more FSU. We take all the wins against those jokers we can get. 6'4", wide receiver, 205 pounds, man, out of uh, Pembroke Pines in Broward County. He goes to West Broward High School. This is a kid, man, number 196 overall in the 247 composite, and that's mainly because 247 themselves – don't have him ranked very highly right now, but on on three, who we're going to go with for the uh, bragging rights of this here commitment, the number 57 overall prospect in the country. Now, as far as evaluating receivers go, I mean, hey, they were the only guys that really had Trey Wilson ranked as high as they had him. He was a five star and on three. So we're going to we're going to go with it for the argument of, man, we got us a top 100 recruit tonight. Cheers up to that. Brandon. I'm sure you've already got some content out there on Locked On about about Joshua Moore committing. What are your takeaways about this commitment? I'm excited. It's something very different from what we've seen this coaching staff. Not a Billy special. Not a Billy Jean special. It's so different. It's amazing. (laughs) It's amazing to see. I was convinced that they just like went up to recruits and they're like, 6'2", you're out. Like not, not doing it at all. But it's a nice little switch up here. It's a Mullen special. (laughs) Oh, yeah. I, I think that he can, I think he can find some time early outside just because like you look at that outside receiver spot that x spot and elijah badger could be nfl bound right away khalil jackson no one knows what he's going to do even if even if he is the starter next year there's still backup spots available for joshua moore we'll see what happens with marcus burke aiden mizell it, it's a lovely thing to see uh, i also like that you mentioned how low 24 7 on is on him 24 7 has him as i think the 60th wide receiver it's in the ridiculous country. And then on three has him as the 57th player in the country. And that's that's such a stark difference. It's insane to see that for me, but I'm very excited for Joshua Moore. I think he could be the start of a fun little wide receiver class that the Florida Gators might bring in this season. Yeah. On three has, I mean, two, four, seven has him the number 47 receiver in the entire country, number 48 prospect in the state of Florida. Um, So, I mean, being carried by the other ranking services, but you know how this works. I mean, he may not have been to many camps that the 247 guys have attended up to this point. Maybe they are uh, behind on their film study. We, we know how this ranking process works. This, this is one of those things that will shuffle itself out as time goes on and the kid goes into a senior season. But like you said, end zone target, man, a guy you can hit in the corner maybe when you get down in the red zone, a first down target. Wes, I know you wanted a tall receiver, man. You've been you've been kind of clamoring for one. Is this this exciting to you? Yeah, I mean, 
I mean, I'm very, very excited uh, for the prospects of we all uh, chronicle getting DJ Lagway, some special guys on the outside for the, for the future. Uh, you look at next year, we we probably know that Trey probably has one more year left. Uh, if next year, if he, if he plays like he played last year and then he play, does that again, and he might have one year with DJ. So you want a guys uh, that can come in and help, uh, as Brandon said, with my Mazel uh, probably being a junior senior then and then uh, Hopefully, we still have Andy Jean. Then who's after that? Uh, we have some young guys that we can't have come into class this year, but those are more on the shorter speed guys. And so Joshua Moore adds a lot uh, to, um, different body type to this class, uh, and somebody on the outside that uh, DJ may be able to throw some, you know, some go balls, some, some things like that, uh, some contested catches. We call them 70, what, 80, 20 balls now, not 50, 50 anymore, but uh, he's that type of guy. So uh, you got to love that that addition to the class. This is uh, a Billy G special <laughs> in a sense that he loved uh, those uh, with Henderson and those boys that and, and Frazier's and the guys that he brought in in the past. So uh, I love this addition. I love it for DJ. I love it for the future of the wide receiver room uh, to add something as, as far as a different body type that we've been used to over the last couple of years at staff. I love the speed guys because we, we went in one direction with uh, Mullen and then now we got a lot of speed guys, which we were lacking and we needed. I think Kadarius might have been the last uh, and he wasn't really a speed guy. He was a shifty type receiver. So uh, to add more uh, in this class is, is uh, phenomenal. I love it uh, for, for, for the future of the program. Yeah. And look, not trying to get too far ahead of ourselves here, but this could be the start of really st- a great wide receiver class for this for this 25 uh group. You've already got more in the in the building. Uh word on the street and we're going to get to it more in a minute. Vernell Brown seems like a real strong lead to the Gators right now even after his visit to Florida State last weekend. Uh you're getting predictions coming in for Nation Montgomery out of Miami to commit to the Gators maybe, you know, I mean I don't have a time frame on him. I don't have a date, but he's getting predictions to Florida. I know he's going to take a Penn State visit. Uh, it's really down probably to Penn State and Florida. He's a Miami kid. I don't see him going to Penn State, and I don't think a whole lot of people do either. He's the number 172 overall ranked kid in the country right now. And then you've got that fourth spot where you can kind of get flexible. I mean, you're still going after the big fish in Dallas Wilson, Cunningham. Um, and then you've got a couple other guys, uh, Ogabo at IMG that you're still kind of in the game for with Washington and Mizzou. So, I mean, this really could be a solid group of four wide receivers, which you would hopefully be headlined by Vernell Brown. And like I said, we're going to talk about that in a minute when we talk about what's next after. But we also had a commitment this weekend, and we don't want to – Forget about that because I think he's a really overlooked commitment in Micah Jones out of Mississippi, uh, a big, big tight end, but an athletic pass catching tight end, probably going to play in line. Um, six, four, I'm sorry, looked at the wrong guy. Six, five, two forty five tight end out of Madison, Mississippi. Now this is a kid not ranked extremely high. He's down in the 500s. And I know and I know people are going to say, man, I'm, I'm tired of three stars. We need talent. But this is a kid offers Ole Miss, LSU, Bama, Arkansas, Colorado. Now, I mean, I'm you know, kind of going down the list there. But uh, Mississippi State as well, obviously, in Mississippi. So these guys wanted this kid. He's, he's very talented. We have a guy in our Facebook group. And if you're not part of our Facebook group, feel free to join. We've got a great chat there with a great group of people who's seen him play live a couple of times. He's talked about him. He said, man, the kid is immensely talented. Can go up, get the ball, create space, all the things you want out of tight end. Um, And we're taking two in this class, and we're going to talk about that in a second as well. Uh, Brandon, what were your your takeaways on the Micah Jones commitment? I was excited. You know, I'm a big – 12 personnel guy. I know that if you mention two tight end sets right now, Florida Gators fans want to rip your head directly off your neck, but I'm a big fan of it. You need to be able to do it in order to function with this offense. And so to add Micah Jones with, with that potential there, I, I love it. Uh, I'm a big fan of adding in line guys like that. Like Hayden Hanson is one of my favorite players on the team. He's on the show every, he's on Lockdown Gators every week during the season. Every Wednesday we have him on the talk and we've had that since he was a true freshman. Um, so I'm a big fan of having that in line spot. I'm glad that a recruitment like 
Micah Jones or a commit like Micah Jones kind of tells you, hey, we're not going away from that because when you brought up Russ Callaway as co-OC, I feel like a lot of people went, oh, we're going to shift a bit more towards air ratey type concepts, which, which you're going to introduce, but still bringing in a guy like Micah Jones tells you we're still going to use the inline tight end a good bit, whether it's 11 personnel, 12 personnel, whatever it is. Uh, but I just like structurally bringing in a guy like that in Mississippi underrated spot for talent. I think per capita, they're one of the best producers of SEC talent in that state. So I'm a big fan of the ad. And like you mentioned, you know, three-star tight end doesn't matter when you look at the offer list and who has genuinely had those committable offers from, because I know we hear that a lot, but genuinely committable offers. I mean, this is a good ad that a lot of SEC programs were interested in. Yeah. If Lane wants you in his offense, I'm, I'm good with you. I, I have no problem at all with that kind of take. Wes, another great offensive piece. You see what the vision is here. What are your takeaways? Yeah, I'm with Brandon. I love 12 personnel, and at, at its core, that's who Billy Napier is anyway. He wants to be able to run the ball, and we've chronicled our tackles and how iffy they can be. Other than Austin <laughs> Barber, uh, he was kind of injured last year, so I don't want to. I love Barber, so I'm gonna. And he switched from new position, so. Uh, but he's the only one I really can say that I trust right now, even though we did have the guy coming from San Diego State. But uh, to my point, to have two uh, tight end, run two tight ends, and this not for the future because he's a. Uh, incoming guy but to have that uh, ability we want we know that Napier wants to run the ball at his core he want, and he has a good run game scheme we talked about his passing game and how he needs to maybe uh, modernize that but his run game scheme is fantastic so this is what he wants to do you want that type of tight end he wants that type of tight end in his system so I love it for uh, the personnel reasons and then when it comes to tight end You've seen these guys at Iowa or uh, these small, not small schools, but these guys that you'd be like, where did he come from? Kansas, Kansas State, like where would he like? Because they're not rated that high because high school offenses don't usually use a tight end like that. If he's like, as you mentioned before, with uh, more in two four seven, if that kid is not going to camps, then he's not going to be recognized and be rated that high. Uh, so, but once you have those offers on the uh, on the table, and then teams, I mean, the scouts start going out and watching to see who you are, then. He'll probably rise it's like I believe Joshua Moore will rise in two four seven once they uh, get. I said, okay, if these other uh, uh, ranking services have him rated high, what are we missing? So uh, I think he'll rise a little bit more once eyes are starting to get on him with the offers he had and not that he's committed to Florida. And that was my next point. If if these services start seeing the offer list, you know, oh well, they're catching him. Why haven't we caught him yet? What have we missed? Um, that's generally the the ego part of it is. Wait a minute, wait a minute. We're a recruiting service. We're supposed to notice these things. We got coaches out here, all these big time schools offering him, and we have, you know, we hadn't even been paying attention to him. So we'll see how that shakes out. Now, let's not drift too far from tight ends because this weekend we got another commitment coming and it looks very, very strong for the Gators. I don't uh, I don't foresee this one going any other direction. So we're just gonna go with a with a you know streak. 99% confidence level on this one. Tayshawn Gelsey, tight end, out of Jacksonville, goes to Riverside High School over there in Jacksonville. This is a young man that's not quite like Micah Jones. He's a little bit more of a, a receiver probably in high school. He's listed as a receiver actually on 247. But the staff sees him as a tight end, more probably more to the Arliss Boardingham side of things, a guy that you can play in line, split out, do what you need to do with him. 6'4", 215 right now. Obviously, you're going to put some weight on him when he gets here. Um, but this is another guy. Now, this is a guy that is more probably of the project, get him now before other teams get on him variety as opposed to what Micah Jones is. His offer list is not going to wow you. It's not going to blow you away. But this is a kid right here in Jacksonville. We know the Gators need to get a footprint back in Jacksonville. We used to own the area. We need to – we know we need to get back to that level. So this is another kid they're going to get in. You don't have to rush him along. You've got, you know, Amir coming in this cycle. I think Micah Jones is probably going to be more game ready as when he hits campus. And then you can put some weight on this young man and groom him for whatever you need next as your previous tight end room kind of, you know, moves out. Brandon, what are your takes on Gelsey? Yeah, uh, I, I think he'll be a Florida Gator commit. I mean, I, I sent out a message May 28th at 7.50 p.m. saying that I think both Tayshawn Gelsey 
and Nation Montgomery are going to be Florida Gators. Um, just just reading the tea leaves with how things were going, Gelsey was clearly waiting for that Florida offer that he finally got there. Uh, I'm I'm a fan of adding him projects or projects. I understand that a lot of people bring up the you know I'm tired of three stars thing, but it's like there's some kids where you just swing on the potential. And I think that's exactly what this is. Uh, you're going to have our list for, I think, two more years. I understand he's draft eligible this year. I think you have him for at least two more he's years. He's got to put more on tape. Yeah. Absolutely. Unless he has a pit season. I mean, and, and <laughs> which, and, let me tell you, that ain't happening. <laughs> and that's that's going to be a hell of an up jump if he, we're going to be playing deeper into the year if he has that kind of. Yeah, exactly. I'm so I'm thinking you have our list for at least two more years, which gives you that kind of time to work with that development. You have our list. Tony Livingston is perfectly capable of playing both spots, I believe, and then you have Amir Jackson now coming in and, and Hayden Hanson, and who I don't think gets near enough credit. I'm brother. Come on, come on now. Hayden's my dude there. Um, and uh, by the way, twenty point three miles per hour on the GPS this spring. That's all I'm saying. Six foot seven, two hundred seven. Yeah, Hayden, same Hayden, Hayden Hanson we watched on the field last season. He's the picking them up Hayden and Hanson. putting them down, baby. He's picking them up and putting them down. Fastest tight end time <laughs> this spring. Fastest tight end time this spring. Twenty point three miles per hour. Well, Arliss had a had a, uh, a yeah. hernia problem, so take that with a grain of salt. But if he's running that fast, I'm ready to tell some lies about Hayden Hanson because I'll I've see. already said in previous episodes. I really, really believe in that kid. Like, I think he is maybe the best all-around tight end on the roster right now. And I know we're not talking about Zipper. We don't know what Zipper is going to do. We Until I see him practicing out there in the fall, I'm not buying any Zipper stock. Uh, I, it's all sold like Life Wallet. <laughs> Might might be a bit more expensive than life well. Like, come on, fifty cents a share. Come on now. Is it fifty cents a share? I thought it was lower than that. But anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, I think the tight end room is, and and I've mentioned this to several people, especially in our chats, that um, this is a guy you're gonna see this now. I think more and more with classes is where you top heavy the class, and on the bottom end you take some guys like this to fill out the roster. And, and save some of the money, and then you feel, you know, through the portal and whatnot. But you've seen Miami do it the last two cycles, and we've given them a lot of grief. But I don't think it's the worst. If you're spending top heavy at the on the top ten guys in your class, and you're getting some real stars, and believe me, we need to start doing that. I understand that, especially at some offensive linemen, Wes. But. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I think you're going to see the bottom five, six, seven guys be in this caliber. A three star, like Miles Johnson, the linebacker from Alabama, that we're also really strong in the mix for. That you take in and you're like, look, he's a prospect. I'm going to stash him away, train him up. And in a year or two, he could be sneaky good and take someone's spot. And you weren't even talking about him two years ago. You agree? Yeah. Wes, what are, what are your takes on, on Gelsey and, and this tight end room that we're about to have? Yeah, uh, we talked about uh, with the receivers as far as having different body types and different – you want that as far as your tight end, especially when we talked about the 12 personnel. You want the guy that can be more of the pass catcher and you want the guy that would be the in-line blocker type come in and uh, when you have like those third shorts, seconds and shorts, and then you bring these two tight ends in. Then you want to have the guy that maybe you can split out and put in the slot at, uh, and then he's that type that you can put in the slot. Yeah, as you said, he's listed as a wide receiver, so he has wide receiver uh, skills. You just want to put more weight on and develop him more as a blocker because uh, to be a tight end, you still want to still want to have the guy to be able to block as well. So he's a development type tight end, uh, and you love it. You mentioned you and uh, both Brandon talked about the tight ends that we already have in front of him, and he has time to room and grow. And I love your point about uh, taking these three star guys to develop. Those are guys that you don't have to probably worry about transferring out because they know they're not ready yet and they want to be developed. And uh, we have to give. Uh, I know a lot was picked put on as far as McIlwain and his ability to find talent that maybe wasn't always five and four stars. We have to give Billy and his staff credit as well as finding guys that maybe uh, not uh, a fifth a, a fifth star, a five star guy or a high end four borderline guy, but a lot of guys that they've uh, uh, 
found have been pretty good uh, as far as like uh, we saw some freshmen last year that were on the field uh, that, that played a lot. Uh, I, I always call a guard the, the dude Torrance, but it's Thornton as far as safety. Uh, playing freshman at Denson uh, on, on the defensive side of the ball. Those guys weren't uh, high four stars or five star guys, but they came in and, and we saw the talent there and we were looking forward to what we could see from those guys in the future. So I love the staff's uh, ability to recruit and find like, I hate to say it because fans, like you say, fans don't want diamonds in the rough, but they have a good eye, a keen eye for talent. So uh, I'm going to trust the staff with these type of guys, especially with tight ends. You never know. Yeah, I, I, like I said, it goes back to I think you're going to see us add some projects like this. And I know that's not going to be the real sexy thing, maybe on paper. And a lot of people are going to be like, no, we need more talent. You got to stack talent. And you're right. But you got to remember, you've got to change philosophies now. And maybe you find it's taken a couple of cycles here to find the right mix. You add a lot of good talent on the top, some projects on the bottom to save a little NIL dollars. And then you can go into the portal and get some plug and play guys for your holes and needs as you see them throughout the season. And hopefully, obviously, we hope the staff is here to expand on that plan. There's not a lot of great five star tight ends, so I don't know what fans want. <laughs> I mean, was Brock Byers a five star? I know. Yes, uh, was. he was the best Brock tight end was. in the country. Okay. Other than, <laughs> I, that, that's why I wanted. Out of California, no one. I, I, I wanted to say that, but other than him, how many five star tight ends did you like? Kelsey. I know he Kelsey. didn't look like a five star. Yeah, Kelsey <laughs> like, was at Cincinnati. Kelsey wasn't this five star guy coming out of. No, I, I, he's the best yeah. tight end in, in NFL history almost. I mean, and Pitts was a, a borderline three, four star. I mean, it yeah, just depended on the star wide receiver. They, they didn't know if he was a wide receiver or not. So it's, you, you it's, find guys that tight end. It's kind of like that offensive line argument where, you know, you it's very hard to judge based on because you've got so many guys that are tweeners. You look at them, they're coming out of high school. They're right at that six foot four. Like he, like Gelsey is, you're, you're 215, 220. You get on campus, you eat a little food, you get in that workout program, and all of a sudden you're 245, 250. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you have guys that just already big. They and aren't done growing. And they were already bigger than the defensive linemen in high school that they playing against, so they look like a five-star, but they don't – you never know. And then the next thing you know, you're moving them to defensive end and or outside <laughs> linebacker. <laughs> We've seen more of that than we need to talk about. All right, so this bodes the question. We know Delcy is Saturday. What's next? What is next for Florida as we're trying to build on a little recruiting role at going into July? Now, there's a lot of – it's not a rumor. Rennell Brown is going to commit in July sometime. Now it's a matter of when. Um, there's some people that say it could be sooner than later. So, Brandon, I'll go – I'll start with you. In addition to Vernell Brown – what could we possibly see here going into the to the month of July? I'm I'm looking at Nation Montgomery. Like he's he's the guy that I've been looking for. You go back to when he was visiting Florida the weeks after that. He had a Penn State visit. He had LSU visit. He went to LSU for a workout. Was supposed to go on an official visit later that week to LSU. He went to the workout and then he canceled the official visit. And it, it's kind of in Florida and Penn State, but. And, and I've said this before, um, to my knowledge, Penn State isn't exactly prioritizing him because they don't think they've got a very realistic chance with him. Uh, from what I've been told over at Penn State, they don't think they've got a good chance with Nashawn Montgomery. And so they're trying to focus a little bit more on their local receivers that might actually want to play in that cold weather. Because In that think, offense? <laughs> yeah, yeah, in that <laughs> offense too. So, I mean, Nashawn's the guy that I look at. And Kobe Howard's another one that I think a lot of people – like I, I don't think he's got an option right now to commit to Florida. Is, is how I'll put it, uh, based on what I've been told. Is that I, I know Kobe really likes Florida. I just don't know if Florida is willing to take him right now, especially when you consider all the names that are up in the air. They're still Cunningham. They're still Vernell Brown the third. They're still Nashawn Montgomery. You know, so I, I understand it, but he's another name that I would look for for the Florida Gators. If you know, I, I don't think. Cunningham's going to come to Gainesville. I, I've been saying for months, I think he's Auburn bound. Something about his recruitment just tells me Auburn. It's, it's screaming at me right now. So that's where I stand on receiver. But Nashawn, Vernell, if you could add them both in July or early July, beautiful start there. Yeah, and then you take your shot at Cunningham. I mean, and it's just like Jeremiah Smith last year. Uh, 
you get him on campus. Um, I know he's got a really good thing going with DJ. Him and DJ bonded real well when he was on his visit, and that's great. The same could be said with Jeremiah Smith last cycle. Um, you don't quit taking your shot because the minute you do, then this fan base is giving giving you the business of well, why did we quit recruiting? You know, Cunningham. Why are we not recruiting Dallas Wilson harder? Well, we are recruiting Dallas Wilson pretty hard. Dallas Wilson's just not as interested in us. And and that's because Dallas Wilson's looking, you know, for what Miami offers a lot of these guys to get them to commit. And it is what it is. Um, but I'm I'm with you. I think you could you you could see Montgomery pop in July. And then it's kind of a mystery to me. I think uh, uh, Tavion Wallace commits July 2nd. That's a UF FSU battle. I know FSU feels pretty good. I know people at UF feel kind of good because his dad loves UF. Um, but we do need to start seeing some defensive guys pop, and obviously the offensive line. We're not even going to go down that rabbit hole because Wes is hype, and it's the 100th episode, and we're not trying to get negative vibes out here on on the 100th episode. But um, I, I would love to see some corners. <laughs> start getting recruited because we need a good bit of them. And, and, you know, Will Harris is, is doing his thing and I get that, but the safety room and, um, Oh, I forgot. Laganza Hayward is supposed to commit as well in, in July. So that's another one. That's correct. He moved it up from the, from the first week of August into July. So you could easily see another four or five, six guys in July and see this recruiting class jump up really quick. Um, Wes, what are some some hot, some takeaways of what you would like to see? Obviously, I I know offensive line, so let's just let's just skip. No, I, 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 I'll go to uh, you, you talked about uh, the safety. I I I'll go with the other safety stubs as well. Uh, I would love to see. Ah, good two, point. I would love to see those two guys in the class, and hopefully, we can get those guys committed in July as well. So. Um, uh, we see USC's class falling apart. Uh, saw the Lincoln Riley thing with it. it was like peace or something. <laughs> so I forgot what it was. Something he put out with some when they were losing some guys in the class. So uh, hopefully we can get Stubbs uh, to solidify that safety room. Uh, we needed some some guys uh, next year will be Castells. Hopefully if he balls out this year and next year he's gone. So uh, I'm, I'm looking at some guys. We have got some guys in the transfer portal the last couple of years. Kind of been out in the world, and I'm looking at this year. Uh, uh, I can't remember the guy's name that came from Washington at the top of my, right now, but um, Asa he, Turner. Yes, sir, hopefully Asa can come in uh, with Thornton, and we have three safeties there. But uh, I would love to have these two safeties come in, learn from those guys that's uh, Thornton and Castell next year, and be ready to go year two of their year where they're redshirt freshmen, true sophomores, however it is. I would love to have those guys come in and learn and be ready to to go in 2026. I believe that would be Bryce Fitzgerald is another one that you might want to look forward to that could commit in July as well while we're talking about safeties. Um, I know we all want Hilton Drake Stubbs, and there's a lot of different chatter out there right now. He took a visit to Miami, and then all of a sudden there was a prediction. You know, Tom Loy's out there saying, well, I put in a prediction for Florida, but then I'm hearing really good things about Miami. And I think right now what you're seeing with Stubbs is he's going to watch both teams and just see how they play. Yeah, so, right. I think Stubbs is the one where it's like you win some games, you get the commitment. But until then, just chill because it ain't. I don't think it's happening. Yeah, that Labor Day weekend game is gonna be a monster. <laughs> Very, <laughs> <great>. <laughs> <laughs> so, Gator Nation, we're just gonna have to watch, see how it plays out, man. Um, you know, a lot of different things going on, a lot of moving parts. So hopefully, um, you know, we can we can get this commitment on Saturday and then we move forward from there. Um, Brandon, any, any other takeaways before we get out of here? Uh, I would like to see some of those project players come at premium positions. I'll say that uh, I, I'm, I'm Thomas Dimitrov, who is a longtime general manager of the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, sorry, pretty sure you're a Falcons fan. Yeah, uh, so, oh man. I'm no, so, no, so no, very no. sorry about that. But Thomas Dimitrov had a, had a theory of, the premium positions, quarterback, pass catcher, pass rusher, offensive tackle, and cornerback. So the positions that involve passing football, I want to see you swing at those. Swing at those positions. Take the freak athletes there. I understand Miles Johnson 
great athlete, could be a big time impact player, and in college linebackers can make a bigger impact. But I, I want to see you take those swings like Enoch Langway when he initially committed. It was like, oh, no one knows who this kid is. But the measurables were elite at offensive tackle and, and things like that. I want to see you swing more at those positions. Yeah, Wes, any other takeaways that you got before we get out of here? Nah, I, I'm, I'm with Brandon on his last, what he just said. Yeah, you want to find those measurable guys at those positions and, and, and see what happens because they they measure well and they measure uh, as far as freak athletes. And and if you can develop them and give them the, cause they, and sometimes they are kind of raw. That's why they are not as highly uh, rated as some guys, but they have the measurables. And if you can get there, a lot of times it's footwork uh with that athleticism to get their footwork down and you can develop them to be a great player so yeah i agree with brandon on that all right boys um i'm having some technical difficulties if y'all can still hear me yeah, i want to ask brandon if he saw you i was like he's spinning over there i just see the circle <laughs> yeah um my my computer just decided to freeze up in the middle of speaking so you know it is what it is um i don't know what it's doing now We'll get through it. We're at the end of the episode here anyway, guys. We appreciate you all so much for joining in with us, not only for this episode, but the previous 100 episodes, man. It's It's been a ride. And, um, man, we can't thank you all enough for joining in with us and, and making this happen for us and continuing to grow this channel. And we want to say a big, huge shout-out to Brandon for joining us tonight. Brandon, tell everybody where they can find you. Yeah, if I may five days a week year round with locked on gators uh youtube podcast any wherever you listen to podcasts and on on twitter i'm always talking my ish <laughs> and so you can find me on there as well we all talk our ish <laughs> i'm talking i'm talking <laughs> you know. we like to go we like to go out and find the trouble sometimes sometimes the trouble finds us it is what it is but it, Thank you so much for joining us. Make sure y'all go out there. Check out Brandon's content. Like you said, he drops daily content for the Locked On Network. Great, great content. Wes, take the people home, man. Yeah, appreciate you guys. This is a big moment for us as this is our 100th episode. Appreciate Brandon for coming on. Echoes, uh, same things Hirsch does. Uh, what Hirsch was saying, when I, I listen to Brandon as well, when I'm working out Lockdown Commanders, I'm a Reds Washington fan. We say Washington, we politically correct. I'm a Washington Commander fan, so I listen to Lockdown Commanders and well as uh, Lockdown Gators as well. Uh, so you guys continue to support us. Hit the subscription button, uh, the subscribe button, uh, hit the like button, drop us a comment. Uh, Tell us what you guys think as far as the, uh, the recruiting is going. How do you feel about it? What do you think some positions that we need to add? Uh, what do you want to see as, as far as the, the, the guy that you're excited about, as far as the guys that are about to commit? So we'd love to hear from you guys uh, and, and see where that goes. And uh, you guys, be safe out there. It's like, I'm in South Carolina. It's 100 down here. So you guys stay hydrated. Uh, get some water. I know the 4th is next weekend, so you guys celebrate safe. Uh, if you're traveling on the roads next weekend, next week as well, be safe as well. And while you're on your road trip, you know, cut on locked on uh, Gators and respect our decisions. So uh, shout out uh, to all you out there and be safe. And as always, go Gators. Go Gators, baby. Thank you for 100. See you on the next 100.